not only from the dimension of the chemical environment physical environment but also from psychological environment so uh, that is the total extent has been divided in the reactive oxygen species environment and environmental impact because the environment has a great impact on the human health and diabetes a natural product and nutraceutical or phytochemical and nutrigenomics or you may say phytogenomics because my research is mainly that is the Uh, gene expression by the different phytochemicals that switch on and the switch of technique as well as the epigenetic study at the embryonic level that means how we can able to change the chemical configuration of the genetic material so that we can able to prevent the disease in the uh, uh, future generation from the embryonic stage we like to uh, uh, shut down or we like to silence the different genes by which we can able to gift a a digit free community we like to try our level best but uh, i do not know that uh, uh, what what is the uh, future of this project so stress can be defined as any type of change that causes physical emotional and a psychological strain as what i have said and this strain this stress you know that can able to disturb the homeostasis that is a uh, constants of the internal environment and due to such deviation of that homeostasis the different communicable as well as the non communicable diseases are gradually increased day by day and i would like to focus that this stress is also most important one for that lifestyle disorders which is at present as x syndrome that is the diabetes cvd as well as the obesity there is environmental stress individual stress as well as the organization stress i am not giving in details about that due to the lack of time because madam is ready to actually uh, uh, ring the bell so i am giving only one example that from the preschool phase how our children is also exposed to the high level of the oxygen from 6 am to up to 10 pm and for this region icm are also give a most important data that type 1 diabetes which was in the 20th century about the 3% of the indian are suffering from the type 1 diabetes but in the 21st century about 13% of the preschool children and the school going children are also suffering from the type 1 diabetes and that is one of the important causes is the stress and most of the important stresses are the aerobic stress and these are actually responsible for the breakage of the lipid for the breakage of the proteins including the different enzymes and for this within the metabolic uh, metabolic environment of the cell is also deteriorated and that also raises the onset of the different metabolic diseases like the diabetes and similarly the dna dna uh, uh, actually fragmentation and the uh, and the point mutation is also going on by that free radical we also noted that hydroxyl radical can able to resolve the hydroxyl cytosine and this hydroxyl cytosine you also know that one is bind with the cytosine but when hydroxyl cytosine is formed then it is unable to bind with cytosine that is that is by uh, nitrogen base pairing rule it can able to bind with that so this is the most important type of the point mutation by that free radicals and that oxidative stress oxidative stress that is the is the essential in imbalance between the production of the free radicals and the endogenous ability by which we can able to destroy these free radicals so that balance system is also deviated and that i like to give you one example like apple uh, and this is our the health status due to that oxidative stress our health is also deteriorated aging is also advanced i am not saying that chronological aging but the physiological aging that the functional activity of our body that is gradually decreased because in 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 previous generation you know that at the age of 80 years they are also uh, that is a uh, evergreen but at present at the age of 45 we are just like 80 so i i i also respond i also give emphasis 
that the oxygen stress is also one of them. Now there are so many markers, I am not going details about that for the oxygen stress evaluation. That is, I repeat, per oxidation study, oxidation, per oxidation chain reaction, we also needed it. Protein oxidation study, glutathione level, catalase activity, and the superoxidase mutate, which are most important antioxidant enzymes for the destruction of the free radicals which are formed in the cell. And I am not going details about the diabetes, I have already seen, and that you know that 90% of the diabetes are suffering from the type 2 diabetes, and the 10% are suffering from the type 1 at the global basis. And they are the, they are the positive, positive uh, actually, risk factors also differ one from another. And this is the national scenario of the diabetes in India as well as the international level. That you know, incidence rate and the prevalence rate of the uh, of the uh, diabetes throughout the world is gradually increasing. <coughs> and WHO also named that in 2030, if we do not take proper care for diabetes management, then they also give the special name to India that is the capital of diabetes. <laughs> so insulin receptor. Insulin receptor that is the membrane bound receptor and uh, by, by tyrosine kinase signal transduction pathway it can able to control the cellular metabolism. And for this regulation of the cellular metabolism there is the genomic pathway and the non-genomic pathway. And for that drug development we have also give emphasis on this both the pathway that the genomic and the non-genomic. And this phytomolecule detection it is a very very tough. For last 10 years we also engaged for the single molecule isolation after extraction, after fractionation, after subfractionation, and then we go to the HPLC study, then uh, NMR study, and then the dia spectra, and we also identified the molecules. We also measure the molecular weight. We also give the pH stability, thermal stability, and we also patent. And the second patent also required about the 10 years, and the third patent is also going on. I do not know that uh, whether it would be uh, successful or not. So uh, that is the strategy of this research. Alternative drug development against the diabetes. You know that there are so many medicines in the diabetes, but we like to develop alternative one. And another one as per WHO, that the parallel treatment, that means the Gold, there is a gold standard, that is the diabetic, anti-diabetic drug, we like to minimize that dose along with the same simultaneous treatment of our phytomolecule so that we can able to delay the drug resistance. So this is the another strategy for this, uh, for this anti-diabetic drug development. Because the question may raise that there are so many drugs in the market, yes, I know it, and their toxicity is also very high. And side by side, we also develop a less toxic phytomolecule, phytodrug, that is the, that is the herbal drug development, and number one, and number two, that is the parallel treatment. And we also give the emphasis on this parallel treatment uh, uh, over, that is the alternative treatment. So natural products and nutraceutical, you know that all of the uh, maximum of the research scholar also give uh, on that nutraceutical for this two days lecture. I am not giving details about that. And we also give the four models. That nutraceutical, how can able to modulate the gene expression? And we also established after five years struggle for its for its uh, actually publication in the international journal. That nutrient can able to bind with receptor and through the signal transduction process can able to modulate the gene expression. One theory. Another one is that no, some of the nutraceuticals which are uh, can easily pass through the membrane, that the cell membrane as well as the nuclear membrane which are actually uh, lipo, lipophilic in nature, they can able to pass through the phospholipid layer and can able to modulate the uh, transcription factors for the gene expression. And the third model is that nutrient directly reaches the methylation, acetylation, carboxylation, phosphorylation of the histone and the DNA of the particular uh, gene at the nucleosome and thereby the gene expression is also changed at that embryonic level which is the part of the epigenetic. And the third one is that the nutrient can be able to alter the oxidation reduction process of this transcription factor and by that way the gene expression may be altered. I am not giving details about that. So first one that is the nutrigenomics, nutraceutical, uh, that is the nutrient having some pharmaceutical activity, that is the nutrigenomics. And we also cover the different sensor uh, for this anti-diabetic drug development, that the glycemic sensors, enzymatic sensor, antioxidant sensor apoptotic sensor and histological study. And we also identified the two molecules. 
and I presented that the C5-dihydroxymethylbenzoic and C5-dihydroxymethylbenzoic acid from Eugenia Jambulana. And this, this patent is also commercialized by one, one uh, uh, industry, pharmaceutical industry in Bangalore. Okay, and this uh, more has been done by our university authority. I am actually the partner of that. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the patent that it, uh, I applied in the 2008, and I also obtained in 2011. And this patent is also commercialized about that anti-diabetic drug development. Okay, and it is also funded by UGC, ICMR, and in this project actually uh, three PhD also that the three students also obtained PhD. Actually, I have, uh, till now, under my guidance, 40 students also obtained PhD, our at present, till now. And three, three uh, PhD students, after obtaining this, are also established in USA. One of, one of, the, one of, one of them is also a professor <coughs> of the Ohio State University, and he is also collaborative in my research work, I'd like to show on later on. So this is the, uh, this is the guideline of this uh, extraction, that is the extraction, the purification and subtraction, and by which we like to identify the particular molecule by HPLC study. So at the extract stage, we are unable to say that this molecule is anti-diabetic, this molecule is the uh, uh, contraceptive. No, it is not possible. After extraction study, we go to the fractionation study, where we can able to uh, separate the most bioactive material. And after that fractionation, we go to the subfractionation, by which we can able to identify the interested biomolecule. And then we structure it. That is the, uh, that is the chemical characterization study. And then we also fit in it. Uh, so these are the serum insulin level, insulin receptor study, C peptide study, and targeted hemoglobin. These are gene expression. That we like to say that whether this antidiabetic drug has any uh, that is a uh, that is a long term effect or is a temporary effect. So for this reason, we also study the gene expression that the hexokinase and glucosis phosphate. And we also noted that in diabetes, this gene has been decreased drastically. But by such phytomolecule. That, that specific phytomolecule can able to resolve the switch on process. Okay, so this is the chemical catheterization process. I'm not going giving details about that. This is the HPLC study. This is the infrared spectroscopy. Okay, this is the NMR study, and this is the, uh, uh, the, uh, the that is the HPLC followed by sequence analyzer, and that is the mass mass fragment of this computed that the P1 and P2 separation. And then we like to identify these two molecules, and we also give that uh, pattern. So these are the several publications. I'm not going into details about that. Uh, another one that I like to focus one minute, madam, only one minute. Holerina okay. antidesentica, that is the most important uh, phytomolecule, uh, that is the plant by which we also isolate one phytomolecule that not only having diabetes uh, recovery process, but also diabetes induced infertility. Because in the reproductive stage, the diabetic patient, there is a high chance of the uh, infertility. So we like to say that is Edward WHO rule that one drug multi-target therapy, one drug multi-target therapy. Yeah. So we like to emphasize that that strategy, and we also noted that this is a phytomolecule that can not only recover this diabetes, but also diabetes induced infertility. I am not saying all type of infertility. I am saying it's the diabetes induced infertility, and this is a second patent that that I have obtained in the 2019. Okay, and uh, and uh, these are the different funding agency, and we also obtain the, that is a glycated hemoglobin, as well as the proteomic study, gene expression study, IC50 study, safety factor study, and uh, uh, that is the inhibitory effect of the alpha glucoside activity at, at, at our grass product of the GI tract, and these are the histological study about the beta cells, and we also noted that is a, uh, uh, that is a beta cell isolation, beta cell isolation, and we also established that the Hepatic stem cell is also one of the most important mother stem cell for the beta cell generation. And uh, there is a three year struggle to establish it. And why uh, actually uh, 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 that, uh, that is uh, by pop beta cell population study, we can able to establish that when we can able to minimize the oxygen stress imposition on the liver, the beta cell population, beta cell population is gradually increased and that is the one way of the recovery of this diabetes. So this is the uh, NMR spectra of the second second patent. Okay, so I'm not going into details about that. Uh, so this is a third patent, third patent uh, that is also submitted in that uh, uh, patent office. I don't know that uh, 2017 we also we also submitted it. And these are the uh, collaborative team. Yes, S. P. Chatti, who is my PhD student, he also working uh, in the Texas. Uh, Rita Benaki, uh, the, the DST, he is also she is also uh, our. Uh, collaboration, uh, that is the 
Professor Dev Benaki, uh, Department of Bargain State Delhi University, and uh, Dr. Bharati Mysore, and AMM uh, Travel Seat. That is, I have also India Tunisia Bilateral Program, Government of India and Government of Tunisia. And I also gave several times there, and that team also come to my laboratory for several times, and we have also uh, 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 the electron microscopy study of the sperm in that infertile patient. How we can able to recover it? So he is very much expertise in that electron microscopy study. And Dr. A. M. M. Mr. National Institute of Health and Family Health in New Delhi, that is another collaborative. Subra Mandal, that is the drug development, that is the uh, central government of uh, government of India, that is the drug development institute uh, Calcutta, and another one, the Kuldeep Jana, he is uh, my P second PhD student, and he is also uh, the, the principal research scientist in the Post Institute. I know uh, that uh, this is, these are the my collaboratives, and so all the output is not by myself, it is a joint effect. Okay? Uh, and this is my research team, uh, that is Dibanita, uh, that is the DST, uh, she is also the DST Nobel scientist, the DST Infart Fellow, uh, she is also the research scholar of the Government of West Bengal, Puja Das, UGC Net Fellow, Pompa Loha, UGC Net Fellow, Sivanita, these are the present uh, research team, Dono Simondal, UGC Net, Sajoni, UGC Net, and the Sohani, UGC Net. Uh, and that I am also giving the acknowledgement UGC New Delhi, they, they, that agency gives the five projects. And DST Government of India sanctions four projects. Government of India, DST give one project. NCRT, one project. NTRF, Government of India, two projects. UGC New Delhi, five projects. Yes, ICR, Government of India, one project. I, uh, and uh, pharmaceutical companies, two projects. Total 5.85 crores have been given by this national agency, so I have been able to establish my lab at the national level. Okay, for my study, all the instruments are available in my lab. Oh, thank you, Dr. Gore. Okay, you okay. And our research foundation, Gajiabad, also helped me for this chemical castration.